So I bought these beautiful 18th century embroideries and I'm really excited to show them. So come with me for a closer look at these, have a little delve inside and see what we can find. The game is afoot. Hi everyone, Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to my channel. Got a really exciting one for you today. I'm really looking forward to showing you these pieces because I've had them for a while and I really want to share them with you. But I do just want to explain the story behind them first and how I come to have them. So way back when, I can't remember now, I did a uh, video on this project here, 10 unusual embroidery threads for you to try. And we just tried lots of funky embroidery threads that I had in my collection. And one of those was this one here. And this is a chenille embroidery thread, like a little fuzzy thread. And I had a little go in this video. I thought oh, that's quite interesting. I'd never used it before. Thought quite fancy having another go with that. So I made myself a little design. I got myself some beautiful variegated chenille threads and I made this little flower and I wish you could feel this which wish you had touch vision um, because these this is beautiful really feels gorgeous and I thought oh I love this thread this is really nice and I thought I wonder if I could do a video on how to use this chenille thread so of course off I went down a rabbit hole and um, was looking for pieces I was trying to find some information on chenille embroidery and it's really hard to find some consistent information there's lots of little bits of it here and there um, that you can find on it and some samples of it, but not much on the sort of history of it. Certainly not like there is for other subjects like cool work and gold work and things like that. So really quite sporadic information about it. So I'm having a good dig around. And then I've, obviously I came across some pieces for sale. <laughs> and these two pieces that I'm gonna show you came up and I thought, oh wow, those are amazing. Um, and they were quite a lot of money, um, especially just to make a video out of. So I kind of brushed them off, but I just kept going back to them. I couldn't find anything else like them. I couldn't find hardly any chenille embroidery, um, original chenille embroideries um, at all. And these ones kept, kept popping up and they were so beautiful. I thought, I think this is too good to pass up. I don't think I can let these go. So I bit the bullet and I bought them and I don't regret it because they're <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. So that's how I came to have them. So I thought I'd do it in, video on the thread and I ended up buying some <laughs> antique 18th century embroiderists. <laughs> so that's what happens when you go off down a rabbit hole and that's why I've got them. So I just thought I should tell you the backstory behind that because that's going to inform some videos in the future as well. So my YouTube channel members and my patrons have already had a little sneak peek of these pieces. They've been having a little guess at what they think they might be, um, what the techniques on them are, what materials have been used. So that's been a lot of fun to do that. So I've been showing them already. If you're interested in seeing videos ahead of time or getting involved in future videos, do check out those two um, memberships channel, um, YouTube channel membership and Patreon. The details are in the description below this video. There's a couple of links there you can click on if you want to go and check those out and get involved with that. So this is what we're looking at today on the screen now. So this is one of them. I'll show you the other one in a second. I'm sure you'll agree and um, without knowing anything about them they're absolutely beautiful already. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to have a little look at this. We're going to do a bit of detective work on this and we're going to have a little route around and see if we can work out how they're made, um, what materials are used in them and maybe some ideas about what they are and what we can do with them um, in the future. So I'm going to read the description that, that came when I bought them. There's not a lot there, but I'm going to read what it actually said. So it said 18th century French silk chenille embroidery, um, pelmet fragments um, with gold metallic thread set of two. That was it, really. Um, so it's quite interesting. A few things are interesting in there. Um, it gives a date, 18th century. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, French silk chenille. So chenille is the French word for caterpillar. And this thread, as I'll show you in a second, looks a little like caterpillars. So I think we can agree that the chenille part is definitely French. The design is quite French. It's sort of, um, if you imagine, um, courtly dress um, in the French court, um, you can sort of see that this design might fit in quite nicely with that. English embroidery of the time wasn't quite so, um, I wouldn't say, would say detailed, but it had a different sort of style to it. So I can definitely see that it is French and with the chenille is French, but I have found samples um, from other countries as well. So um, I'm going to take them on face value that it's this old and this is what it is. And um, and it says that they're pelmet fragments. If you don't know what they are, those are the bits that go above the curtains. They kind of do the covering of where the curtain attaches to the wall and then the bit that go around the top of the curtain. So it says it's two pelmet um, fragments. Um, the shape is quite interesting. This shape at the bottom indicates that it could be like a, 
swag. I'm thinking as I look at them, maybe from around a bed rather than kind of curtains up against a window. I'm thinking it might be the sort of thing that went around a bed. That would kind of make more sense. You can let me know what you think about any of my ideas, by the way, underneath the video in the comments. I'm not an embroidery historian. I'm just looking at these from what I know about embroidery practically from stitching it. So if you've got any knowledge or any ideas, then do share them with me because it'd be really great to see if we can throw any more light on what these are. So we're going to have an overall view of this first, then we're going to look a little bit closer at the chenille embroidery and at the metal work as well. And then do keep watching because we're going to talk later about what I'm going to do with these for future videos as well. Okay, so let's look at the overall pieces. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Storm's just coming in. It's raining quite heavily on the roof, so sorry if you can hear the rain over this. So it's um, they are worked on silk. I'll show you the second one in a second, but we'll just look at this one first. They're very similar in the way that they're made. So it's worked on a silk. It's not a lot left of this silk. <laughs> we'll talk about that. You can see it's disintegrating. It's disintegrating every time I move it around, in fact. So the silk is in a really bad condition. So the whole thing is worked on this silk. Um, the centre part, the flowers are worked in this chenille thread this chenille embroidery thread which we'll look at i'll show you what that looks like in a second in the middle and it's in really beautiful condition if this is 18th century so 1700s it's nearly 300 years old and this looks like it has just been stitched i've managed to look underneath it at the back because it's um been taken apart from whatever it was i can actually get underneath um, I will have a look and see if I can show you that or um, hopefully it won't fall apart anymore. I'll try that in a second. Um, but the colours on the back are exactly the same as they are on the front. This has not faded even slightly, which you would expect to see, especially from something that's maybe been used as well. So I don't think it's been in a window. It's not been in the sunlight, which... Um, and, and just it's beautiful this embroidery is absolutely gorgeous condition there's a little bit of silk in here as well we'll zoom on that in a second as well but I just want to talk about the metal so silk embroidery thread in the middle the chenille thread and then there's all of this beautiful metal work around the outside now if you're familiar with gold work you might have seen our videos on gold work this is a very specific part of gold work and it's just using a metal embroidery ribbon i'll show you some of that as well and it's put down in lots of different ways it's absolutely incredible for somebody who's done a lot of gold work i am in awe of what they've done on this and i don't know what some of the techniques are i've never seen some of these techniques on here so we're gonna have a little probe around and see if i can work out how to do those um and there's one other feature of this which they picked up on on when we've done it with the looked with the channel members and my patrons as well is it's got some netting on it as well so we're going to have a close look at that netting and what that might be and i had an idea originally i thought oh i know what that netting is and now i've looked at it closer it's not that it's something else altogether so that's quite an interesting aspect as well that we'll have a close look of so we're going to move this top one out of the way and we'll do all of that looking on the one underneath which is slightly bigger so we'll try pick this up really carefully and hand it to jonathan <laughs> He's going to put it down on the table equally carefully. Thank you. We got. Let's put this one in position. So this one is slightly bigger. So let me see if I can get this one all in shot. So this one's slightly deeper, but again, you can see this swag at the bottom. So it could have been like maybe the middle pelmet and the shorter ones of the side pelmets. I'm trying to envisage what this might look like on something and why it might be the shape because the flower design is the same. The gold patterns are the same, but it's just a slightly bigger in size. So let's start with the chenille, I think. Let's zoom in on that and have a little look at that. So I just want to read you the description from this on what chenille embroidery is, because as I said, it was quite hard to find a really comprehensive history of it. But this is Weldon's. I've used this before. Weldon's Encyclopedia of Needlework. You can get a copy of this online. I'll put the, the link for that in the description below. If you haven't got this, you can just check that out online. You can search by the word chenille. <laughs> really useful. So I'm just going to read their description of chenille embroidery. Uh, originated in France and derives its name from the resemblance its round fluffy threads have to the bodies of caterpillars. During the 18th century, it was fashionable at the French court and many pieces worked by Marie Antoinette are still preserved. I tried to find some information out about that and I can't find any, so I don't know where that came from. From there it came to England where it was much used. It is so soft that when well worked it looks like a painting on velvet. Mostly used for articles that will not crush. 
Um, that's interesting. It says that's lots of clothes made out of it, which obviously you would sit on and you would wear. Um, and there are two kinds of chenille, the fine or chenille embroider, so embroidery chenille, which is soft and not wired and was used in the old work. And chenille ordinaire, a coarse chenille which was used for couching on the surface of material or passed through large hole canvas or gold and silver perforated cardboard. And then it goes on about how it's worked. So that's kind of it. <laughs> I can't find an awful lot more than that about the history of it. So let me just show you some of the actual thread. So we've got some different chenille here from different manufacturers because it does vary quite a lot. So I'm just going to show you this one first. So you can see that it's quite fluffy here. So what it is is a thread down the middle. If I just pull the end of that off, you can hopefully see that. Let me put it on my palm of my hand. So there's a core thread in the middle, it, two threads, they're twisted together and then there's a pile that goes across that core thread which is what makes the fluffy part and that's trapped between the two twists. So you can see immediately what the problem of this is, is how easily that comes apart. You can just pull those out and that pile just comes out of the twists there. So it is a really delicate thread which We'll come back into this later because we'll talk about how it's been stitched down. So there's the two threads in the middle and a little pile of it there. So that is a silk chenille. I've got another silk chenille here. This is a Japanese one. So you can see the same effect if I just separate that out. But you can see that there. So that's another one, another version of the silk chenille. I've tried to match these colours to the piece but that's quite difficult to do. There's an Avera Soir silk chenille, pure 100% pure silk. You can see how fluffy and fat this one is. This really is like caterpillars. <laughs> and I've tried stitching with this on that 10 unusual threads video really hard. It drove me mad. So they do vary even the silk the silk ones vary and this just disintegrates so easily it comes off the end there but it's beautiful and so I'm look at it, it's gorgeous but really, really hard to stitch with. And then there's another one here that looks quite different. This is also a silk one. This is an undyed one. And this one is quite flat. So you can sort of see the construction a little better with this one. And I've stitched with a bit of this one, much easier to stitch with, much easier to stitch with. So it's interesting how many different kinds there are and how um, easy or not they are to actually stitch with because this piece here Oh, got the fluffy bits on it. Let's take those off. There, and let's point with the wooden thing. So this has been actually stitched with. So normally when you do chenille embroidery that I know of is you lie on the top of the surface and then you stitch over it. So you couch over it, you put a little stitch over the top of it and all the chenille lies on the top. So if I just show you that with my this little piece here. The only chenille you can see on the back is where I've pulled it through to the back and stitched down the ends. All of the rest of this stitching is the couching thread. So the chenille is on the top of the fabric. The couching thread, which is a normal sewing cotton, is underneath. That's how I know you put chenille down. That's the only way that I know that you do it, is you put it on the top and you couch over it. So when I peered at this on the other side, these stitches, these are long stitches here, they go all the way around the silk fabric. Um, so somebody's actually stitched with it, they've put it in a needle and they've stitched with it like a normal thread. Now I have tried this and I'm going to show you this in another video all about chenille embroidery thread. So I won't show you now, so you'll have to keep watching if you want to see that one in a future video, um, because it is really hard to stitch with it. When you bring it through the fabric, the fibres just disintegrate and the thread falls apart. So it's super hard and all of this has been stitched that way. It all goes around the fabric. I'm just going to see if I can peel that back and show you the back of it as I mentioned earlier so you can see that the colours haven't faded and you can see what the stitching looks like on the back. So I can't show you on the big one. I can't actually get to it. So I've just brought that smaller one back in. I'm just holding it really carefully because <laughs> you don't really want to do this too many times but this is the back of it. So you can see how bright the colours are on it they have not faded even slightly but look at the stitching the stitching goes all the way around this silk and this is quite fine silk that they worked it on with um 
no backing on this bit there's a backing on the back but there's no backing underneath the embroidery so they've done it straight onto the silk and they've just stitched with it like a normal thread which is absolutely amazing to me um, because it's really hard to stitch with but I just wanted to show you the back so I'm going to put that back down and give it back to Jonathan so when you know how something is made I think you just appreciate it a bit more because this is really solid stitching absolutely beautiful um, and you can see these different tones of it as well you can shade with it's dark here to this light color here but if you see on the ends of the petals here um, there's a different kind of a thread so what they tended to do with this is because the velvet is a sort of quite a rich um, solid color you don't really get the sheen on it like you do with um, the silks so they put a little bit of silk in there just to highlight the edge of the petals and this is quite common you see this a lot in um, chenille embroidery here and they've just put some flat silk in the top here and it just highlights the edges of those petals there's a little bit more there and there's a little bit around it here some little bits of satin there as well so the silk that they would have used for that is this kind of a silk not this colour but this is an Avera Soir one as well so this is a flat silk or an unspun silk so you can see the fibres let me just pull a few apart there you can see the fibres there they haven't been spun together to make a thread they're just individual loose strands of silk and you can choose how many of those you put together <clears throat> and they would then stitch with that over the top of the chenille to highlight the edges of the petal so they would have probably used more than that you can get different weights of it this is the only one i have so you can put it as many strands together as you want that's a little bit more realistic of what they would have used and put that together over there so not only are they doing this difficult stitching with the chenille they're also handling this unspun silk which is quite hard to to control it wouldn't have been on a reel like that <laughs> probably been in this format so this is a whole hank of it and you can see the fibers of the silk here and you choose how many you want to put together it sticks to your fingers however much you moisturize it sticks to your fingers so it's a really hard material to use so it would have probably come in that format as well so that was the silk thread they used with the silk chenille to create these beautiful flowers so let's have a little look at the metal areas on this so i have looked at this technique in my gold work video so we did this little sampler here of the different techniques so this is like a ribbon that's made out of metal basically and all of these samples have been couched down so like I was talking about the chenille you put the material on the top you put some stitches over it in a different thread you couch it down and those are all the couching stitches so the metal is all on that side the stitches are all on this side not on here so that's how you would normally do it you can check that video up we'll put that up in the corner if you want to see what that's all about and see how to use those metals so here are those metals on here but again like the silk chenille they have stitched with the metal which is absolutely amazing if you know how to <laughs> do any gold work you've ever done any it's hard enough doing that method and couching it down and putting it on top but they've actually stitched all the way around so here's some of these metal parts here and if I just lift it carefully you can see it here can you see that metal goes all the way around to the back it goes round and round this silk fabric it's absolutely incredible how they have done this um, and you can see the damage that it's caused this silk as well and there's lots of different types of the metal ribbon so i'll show you a couple of samples so this is one that we have in our shop we have lots of different colors of these they're a millimeter wide and you can see it's sort of ribbon it's quite kind of flexible and pliable so it's about the same size as that this is about a millimeter this one is plain it's just shiny it doesn't have this texture on it there are some areas that are just plain over here so this metal is the same as this it's obviously not green <laughs> gold but this is the same as this so there's a shiny one you can also get it with the textures on it and when i was looking for materials in my collection i found this little box vintage metal thread genuine vintage metal threads made in france so it's over 70 years ago but i don't know when i bought this so it's longer than that now really beautiful <laughs> don't ask me where this came from i've got no idea um but it's got some metal threads in it i just pull this one out which are very similar hopefully you can see that let me get out of the bag 
in the bag because it unravels easily. So if I just unravel a little bit of that, you can see the texture on it. Let's put it next to that one there. So very similar texture on it. So it's interesting that this thread is made in France and it happens to match this piece, which is said is made in France. So all the while I'm just trying to think what, where are the clues to tell me where it is made and how old it is. Um, I can trust that it is what they say it is, but it's always worth just having a little look and thinking, are there signs that back that up, back that information up? So there is a little one there. So this mecca also from France with that texture on it as well. And we've actually got a larger one of those too. This one is in, this one is in silver and you can see that texture on there of that one so this one is two millimeters so this one is wider than the one that's on here but just wanted to show you that texture on it and how you can get these metal ribbons with a different texture on and there's lots of different textures so there's a smooth one this one has got a kind of diagonal uh, ridge across it's kind of been corrugated this one has going the other way it's got kind of a two-way pattern across it so there's lots of different kinds of this metal going on here and again they've just stitched with it, they put it in a needle and stitched with it. Now the only time I have come across this technique is in India with a technique called Mukesh embroidery where they put it in a needle and they stitch through the fabric with it. So I had a tiny little go at this a while ago so this is a little bit what it looks like, it's quite good for making these little dots and they put them on the saris and decorate the saris and you put it in a needle and you stitch kind of three stitches across each other. That's a very small bit that I had to go at. The other really interesting thing I found out about this metal work when I peered closely is that it's got some cardboard underneath it. So I hope we can see this bit here. If I just move that apart. Can you see that cardboard underneath it there? So that's actually this shape here. It's been cut out of card. It's actually when I had a really close poke at it, it's more like paper. It's very thin um, card paper. Did actually go and Google when was cardboard invented <laughs> see if this was authentic. Again one of those markers to see how old is this actually but yeah it's centuries old cardboard so it can be cardboard but it's very very fine and it's the same sort of colour as the metal on top so the idea is you put it underneath and if it does show through then it's not going to be really blindingly obvious. So there is cardboard under that so each one of these shapes has got a piece of this card underneath and it's been stitched over while well, it's been stitched around so you've got your silk layer you've got your cardboard and then the metal goes around all of those and it's stitched around it so for all of these this shape has been cut out the amount of work in these is absolutely phenomenal and if they are pelmet hangings there's going to be more than two so there's some more of these somewhere in the world so um the amount of work is incredible it just blows my mind really <laughs> don't know how they have the patience for it. So that's got cardboard underneath it. And I want to mention as well these little shapes here because I have never seen this technique before either in this metal thread. So these also have cardboard underneath them. I had a little poke around and there is cardboard under there. And then it's a kind of a weaving, I think. So there's long pieces that go along here and then these ones go around them. But I can't quite work out how. I think there's like two straight ones and then it goes around one and then it's like a brick pattern. <laughs> I can't really explain it. Um, so never seen that before and there's just tons of it all over this piece as well. So again they've cut the pieces, they've put these long pieces over the top and they've done some sort of weaving, some sort of stitch around the metal threads on there. That has gone through to the back, we can see that here. So it's quite interesting, it's straight on the back so they've gone around the back back up and done some weaving around the back. So that will inform me how these are made. So if I wanted to have a go at recreating that, I could have a pretty good go at it. So the fact that it is in a bit of a bad condition does mean I can look at the back and I can see more of how these things are constructed because I can see the back. So let's have a look at this netting that I mentioned right at the beginning of the video because when I saw the net on this and some of you spotted it as well on channel members and patrons so well done if you saw the net on it I immediately thought it's been conserved so what you would do with a conservation piece is you squash it between two pieces of net very fine net and you would sew the net together and it would protect it this is in really bad condition the silk's really in, in quite a bad bad way and I thought oh somebody's tried to restore to repair it, to, to conserve it. So conserving it, you're keeping it as it was, you're protecting it and making it stable to make it last a bit longer. But then when I peered a bit closer, that is not the case. 
at all. So I'm going to show you this bit here. I don't know if you can see, but underneath this metal here, so there's a bit of kind of trellis work. So I've done trellis work in Jacobean embroidery. We've got loads of videos on different trellis patterns, but I've never seen it done with this like like this one has been done. So the pieces are crossed. They've actually put a holding stitch down with the metal. So again, they've sewn with it with a needle, but the netting is underneath the metal. So the metal has, the net has been put on first. So you've got your silk layer, then there's a layer of net across the whole thing. Then they have put the cardboard on, then they have put the metal and sewn the metal around it. So it's underneath it all here. It just goes up to the edge of it. If this had been conserved, I'd expect to see the net completely over the top of everything, but it's not, it goes underneath. And when I have a look at this bit, I can see that that net is underneath there. So they put that on as part of the process. So I'm guessing when you make something to be used, that they are thinking about that they're thinking how can we make this a bit stronger this silk is quite fragile we'll put this net underneath it and it will just help give it some structure and protect it a little bit so I think that's fascinating that they have done that um, it's disintegrated more than the silk has so you can just see little bits of it and in fact <laughs> there is bits coming off this the whole time I've got a little board here all the bits that are flaking off it I'll put them in a little bag but actually see if I can show you that so one of the bits that came off is a bit of the metal and you can see the net is in it it's trapped inside that metal so it's definitely been stitched over the net um, and not the net put on afterwards so I'm saving all those little bits <laughs> don't know what Maybe I can't do anything with them, but they're all part of it. So I thought that was fascinating. So it's been stitched on top of the net and the net is all disintegrated. So I'm guessing the net's a silk net. Um, silk only has a certain lifespan, especially if it's not looked after. So humidity, um, sunlight, changes in temperature, handling and wear will all affect the life of the silk. Um, and it's definitely all gone rotten. So that's what the story of the net is. So I thought that was a really interesting part to discover. So that's quite a detailed look at the front. I do want to flip it over and show you the back because the back's always quite interesting and that can tell you some as well. It's pretty delicate, so I'm going to have to be really careful with it. Um, but I do want to show you. So let's see if we can do that without causing too much more damage. So even more pieces have fallen off that as we do. We've done that and you can see it here. This is a piece of silk on the back. So just to show you how it's been constructed, that's my silk layer on the front with the embroidery on it. You can see the metal there. So no backing on that at all. I always put a backing on my embroidery. So I'm absolutely amazed they've done that metal work without um, putting anything underneath that. And then there's this weird fabric behind it. I've got no idea what this is. It's like a sort of open gauze. That's, I'm wondering if it's been glued. I'm wondering if this is a layer of glue on the back of it. It's not transferred onto the silk at all, but it is sort of filling in the holes um, and it feels a bit, a bit kind of crinkly. I don't know what it is. It is a woven one, but it's had something on it and they put that on the back and then there's another silk backing behind it. And then I think back to the pelmets. I thought, but they put a silk backing on the back of a pelmet. So I'm a bit confused. I don't know the answer to that, but look at the state of it completely rotten it's really really fragile it is just disintegrating there's nothing you can do about that it's protein fiber once it's been attacked um there's no coming back from it so it's just going to keep doing that and falling off um but i just wanted to show you the back of that so you can see the construction is there's a it's <laughs> a big piece of it on the back look um so this is pretty solid this part there's no damage to this that i can see at all i'll just move it up so you can see the edge of it so let's just have a little look at the edge because this is a bit intriguing as well. So it has an extra piece of silk on the edge. So there's the embroidery up to there and the silk. Then this is next another piece here. It starts there, goes over the edge, wraps around the edge and would have gone all the way up the back, I guess. So maybe that's the backing coming down and it's coming over onto the front of it. They finished the back on the front. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> If I was to make this, I wouldn't have made it like this at all in any any aspect. But it's fascinating to, to do a little bit of detective work and see what's going on here. And also this netting goes all the way up to the edge. And there's a little bit of that metal in the netting. So the netting is 
underneath the embroidery here would have gone all the way up to the edge there but why is there a little bit of metal work there i don't know that clearly stops it's not a bit of the design that's missing the design clearly finishes there so why is there a little bit of metal on the edge i don't know what do you think um and again this interesting shape um jonathan's had a little thought about this and is wondering if maybe it's something that goes around a kettle drum so like you decorate around the edge for sort of ceremonial things they look a little bit like this if you look at a picture of a kettle drum cover and it sort of hangs around the kettle drum so i don't know really i'm not i'm not sure i'm intrigued by the idea it's a helmet it's the right shape i don't know why how it would have been attached to the bed and what the the idea of the silk on the back is um, and the fact that it's really fragile and it's really has fallen apart quite spectacularly it hasn't faded so it's not been in the sunlight i don't know what do you think it might be do you think it's a pelmet or do you think it's something else that we haven't thought about because there's a few confusing things about it that's for sure and i think because this edge is unfinished it must have had some sort of a braid around the bottom it must have had a tassel or a braid or something around here attached to this to finish it off it would not have obviously been left like that so there's definitely something else gone on over that there's a little bit more metal in the edge there as well so i'm intrigued by why there's a bit of metal in the edge and the fact that it's been taken apart i think maybe to preserve it and to protect it because it was falling apart it's taken apart but the edging has been taken off as well so maybe that was really worth something and they've taken that off and done something separate with with that so um really really fascinating piece so let's just turn it back over before it falls apart anymore I want to mention about keeping things like that we've got a whole video on how to look after your embroideries and how to care for them and how to store them this one has been folded which <laughs> really makes me cringe you can see it's been folded right down the middle i think that's what this damage is here the metal the way they work the metal has literally cut through the silk stitching around it hasn't left any silk and it's left all whole and all metal so that's why that damage has been caused but there is a crease all the way right down the middle here there's another one down here so i think it's been folded at various points it came to me kind of rolled but rolled the wrong way round so rolled with the embroidery on the inside which might be a natural instinct but the embroidery needs to be on the outside not the inside so it came to me rolled wrong and it obviously clearly has been folded as well so do check out that video on how to look after your embroideries you may think it doesn't matter now but if somebody finds it <laughs> in 100 years time they'll be like why did they fold it so um, quite important to look after it. The silk is disintegrating, so I'm going to keep it flat. I've got acid-free tissue paper around it. I need to make a sort of a box for it, or I could buy a conservation box to put it in, um, just to make sure that it doesn't um, damage any further. Right, so what am I going to do with these pieces? <laughs> that's a question so i'm going to make some more videos on it basically it's so beautiful um, and i'm really interested to look at it and see how it's made because like i said i wouldn't have made it this way so we're going to look at chenille embroidery thread how to use chenille i'm going to do a project on that um, so keep an eye out for that one that one will be next then i think i'm going to have a go at this metal work so we're going to have a go with the cardboard doing it over the cardboard and uh, sewing with it in that Mukesh style that I talked about so we'll have a go at that as well and then we could take some designs for it and I'm going to give you some designs as well I think from this we'll take some of the flowers out and have a little go at the flowers um, and then I need to think about what I do I what I do with it do I keep it as it is in a um, in this state and just protecting just putting the tissue or well, there are a couple of conservation ideas that we could talk about um, so if you'd be interested in that do let me know there's a couple of things we can do with these pieces as well so there's lots more that we can get out of this it's a really fascinating subject i hope that you've been really interested to learn about these um, and to have a little bit of a poke around and a bit of a detective work with me so we've looked at some really interesting um, embroidery threads and materials on these projects today if you're interested in some other unusual threads to use do check out this video up in the corner here if you've enjoyed this one do give us a thumbs up really appreciate it i'll see you in the next one